afternoon. Come on, Freedom Fighters. Good afternoon. Okay, maybe you're nervous, but I think I'm more nervous to stand here after all these 23 people. Uh, maybe you can help me relax a little bit. Stand up, please. Shake a little bit and uh, let the foot go down to the feet. Uh, are you shaking? Let's relax together. I'm also nervous. Thank you. Uh, and in case you sleep, please do not snore. Uh, my name is really... My name is Kasha Jacqueline. I'm a feminist. I'm a lesbian. I'm a Pan-African. And um, I'm a Ugandan. Uh, sorry, my eyes can't see properly, but uh, I only wear this to look intellectual. Chandler? Uh, currently in my country, these are the laws that are used to criminalize me and other people, about half a million Ugandans who are LGBT. I'll not use really homosexual uh, because not all LGBT persons really want to identify as homosexuals. So as you can see, that is what um, right now I face life imprisonment in case I'm caught with another fellow woman having sex. I've lived all my life a lesbian. I've actually never been in the closet. I made 30 years last week, but the first 23 years of my life, I lived openly lesbian. Why did I do this? It's because I did not know it was illegal to be lesbian. I only found out uh, after being expelled from three high schools and being suspended in my last year at university because people complained at school that I was not behaving like a proper African woman. I was not wearing skirts and, you know, dresses. So my parents were called at school again, and they were told that I should go back home and get proper women's clothes. When they called my mother the second time, she said, actually, she's sick because the disease is just growing. She has been expelled before in very many schools, and I have nothing to do about it. So just let her finish her education, and then we shall see how it goes. And that's how I survived. But before I survived, somehow, I don't know where the guts came from, I was refused to go to the girls' hostels at my university, not even 100 meters distance within the girls' hostels. So I used to rent outside a small room outside the university. And then this one morning at around 11, the registrar of the university came to, to my room and found some girls there. Because before, before you enrolled in university, you have that one week dissertation. And I was always on the agenda, warning all the new students about being with me. And they were told that whoever is found with me would be expelled. So somehow it was market for me because they kept telling everyone that I'm a lesbian. So those who are lesbians identified with me. Yeah, but uh, he came and said that again I was going to be suspended. I do not know where the guards came from, but this time I told him I'm not going to deal with him. He would deal with my lawyers. I didn't have a lawyer. I don't know where that came from, but I told him you'll deal with my lawyers. And he said he was going to call my parents back, but he didn't. Somehow I managed to finish my degree in accounting. But after I finished, I used to hang out with other lesbians in a pub in Kampala. And really, this is the time I got to know that actually it's even law in Uganda to be who I am. We were exposed in the newspapers that uh, there is a lesbian pub somewhere. Well, again, they didn't market for us because other lesbians came and identified with us. For them, they thought they were ashamed us. This is when we strategized and said, we need to do something about this. Because after we were exposed, people were waiting for us outside the bar. Some people were raped, others were beaten, sexual abuse, and it was a form of curative rape to cure us of lesbianism. So we said, instead of sitting here and talk about women, sex, smoke, drink, let's make a change so that when you're out of here, it's also safe for us there. And that's how my organization was formed. But uh, about um, six months after my organization was formed, a lesbian was killed in a very popular government school in the country. She was 
phone writing love letters to fellow girls. They called her parents at school assembly, collected all the students in the school, and they beat her at assembly, shaming her, humiliating her. She could not take it. She went back to the dormitory and took a bottle of pills, and she died. Every newspaper, every newspaper, all the radio stations, TV stations were talking about this. But no women's organizations condemned this. The government did not. Actually, all the callers into the radio stations were happy. They were jubilating that they've gotten rid of a lesbian. We spoke. People who had already known about us, but who were not political. We took a stand and called in and condemned. We forced the government. We called the government to hold accountable the parents and the school. It did not work. We were challenged. We kept quiet. Two years later, in 2006, another lesbian was beaten by the school headmaster, and she died on her way to hospital because they told all the students in the school to write suspected homosexuals, and her name appeared on everyone's list. Again, no one acted. We partnered with Amnesty International, followed up the case, somehow disappeared in the laws. So we said we need, really need to do something. We decided to go public. Already our pictures were in the press, People were hearing us on radio because we called in. There was a talk show. It was about woman and man. And then we called in and said, hey, there's even man and man and woman and woman. And they said, are you willing to talk? We said yes. So we went on radio. And then people said, no. We want to see them. We see them in the papers, but you can just pick any paper from, I mean, any photo from anywhere. We said, OK, you want to see us? Because in 99, the president had already told the international community during an international HIV AIDS meeting when he was asked by a journalist that, what are you doing about homosexuals in the fight against HIV? And the president said they do not exist in Uganda. This was in South Africa. Two months after he came back in the country because it was all over the papers, a gay couple got married in one of the suburbs. And he woke up and said, shoot all gays on sight. This was 1999. So in 2007, we said, well, people are saying we do not exist. Let's show them that we really do exist, and we are not ashamed of who we are, because they said we are hiding, because we are ashamed of who we are. So we decided to have a very historical media campaign. Let us live in peace. You can see some people are in the wearing masks. And even we have a Kenyan who is not wearing a mask. We, call, we brought together people from the region who would partner with us in this historical event. There were very many people there, some were wearing masks. And people said, you see, they are wearing masks because, again, they are ashamed of who they are. And we told them, no, you're missing the point. We are wearing masks because there is a message behind the mask. You cannot easily tell who a homosexual is. It could be your father. It could be your doctor, it could be your teacher, even your sister. But if they hear you condemning them, they cannot come out of that mask because you're already condemning them. They got the message, but I think we just woke up sleeping dogs when we held this press conference. Immediately, protests began in Uganda. The Interfaith Rainbow Coalition Against Homosexuality was formed, led by the Minister of Ethics and Integrity. And by the way, it's only Uganda that has this ministry, Minister of Ethics and Integrity, uh, with also a very famous anti-gay pastor. They led that demonstration, calling on government to do something that homosexuals are promoting the vice. How could they be allowed to go on TV? Because it was all over the media. These people walked until a rugby club. Why did they go to the rugby club? Because they found out that lesbians are always at the rugby club. It was our place to hang out because we make the football team and the national team, the national, you know, Uganda. So they decided to go there to cast the demons out of the field. They wrote on the walls, they fell down on the field, 
they prayed for a whole day to cast the demons out of the ground. The same year after it had become too much popular, the Uganda was hosting the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. That was in November, and we said this is a chance for us to address the Queen and let her know what her legacy is really doing to us because the laws you saw were just imported by the Queen to Uganda or by the colonialists to Uganda. Because why would they bring these laws in a country if there was no already homosexuality? You cannot say I'm going to Oslo to criminalize prostitution when there are no prostitutes, unless you first see them. So they first saw homosexuals in Uganda and then decided to criminalize them. Then after they say we are importing it from the West. So we decided to go and try to address, there was a space called the people's space. When we went there, those are government officials who threw me out of the people's space. I think you can see I'm being held out. All these other people you see here were thrown out, who were refused to address the audience that were going to shame Uganda. So we did not really talk. And then the media began naming us. We named guys and babes who enjoy bum sex in Kampala. People were expelled. People were sucked from jobs because their names appeared in the paper. Families broke up because their husbands were named in the paper because they would describe you, the car you drive, where you stay, who you suspected of dating. And even children of suspected homosexuals were harassed in schools. Here, I'm there. This is one of the government's not wanted press at all because they speak the truth. That's a transgender who has been arrested over 30 times. She's known all over the country. People are taking advantage of her because she's a little bit illiterate. She does not really understand. So she's really in and out of prison and I think it has become like, okay, for the society because she's everywhere. But the reporter was an intern in this daily newspaper from US and immediately there was again another protest after this. She was deported from Uganda because she was promoting homosexuality. And then one of the ex-gays in Uganda in the middle there went and confessed to parents that actually we do, we do recruit people into homosexuality. And then parents decided to protest. Parents want the anti-gay bill, which was enacted. And that gentleman there is the one who invited the Americans to Uganda last year in March. These Americans helped um, draft the anti-homosexuality bill, number 18 of 2009, which is now saying that life imprisonment is very weak. So they are proposing death for us. And even introducing laws that even if, he, if my brother does not report me within 24 hours, he faces three years in jail. If my landlord does not say that I'm renting my house to a homosexual, she faces the same. Even just being here today, in case this bill is to pass, going back home, I would be put to jail for seven years because I'm practicing what is called promotion of homosexuality. Here, this is the Minister of Ethics. Up to now, he still insists that the bill should go through or else we migrate. So he's telling us to leave just like other religious leaders who have proposed that we be put to an island on Lake Victoria and be left to die of disease and hunger. This is the proposed one million march that uh, people in Uganda are suggesting. It was banned, but it turned into a gay show because they were showing pornography in church where there were even young children. And by the way, pornography is illegal in Uganda. But this gentleman was not arrested for showing pornography, but he was showing gay porn of people urinating on each other, eating each other's faces, and he was telling people in Uganda, this is what gays do. So we really need to stop them from doing this. These are some of the protests that came up uh, after the international pressure. There's been a lot of international pressure, Sweden, UK, 
US, even the President Obama said something, Hillary Clinton said something, Canada, and it's not really welcome in Uganda, so people are really protesting, saying that leave Uganda alone. I think you can see Africa loves Obama but hates homosexuals. There is no exit. I think you can see some posters there. These are some of the things we are facing. I arrived here on Sunday, and there was a protest on Sunday back home in my country because they are calling on government to ask them, why haven't you yet passed this bill? What is taking you so long? Because this bill apparently was supposed to be discussed in February, and it's now April, and people are wondering, is government bowing down to international pressure? So on Sunday, two days ago, three days ago, there was a protest. And this week, today, they are ending 21 days of fasting. People are not eating. Of course, we know they're eating in the dark, but they are saying they are fasting. Uh, to, you know, eradicate homosexuality from Uganda. And on second, there was supposed to be another American coming to Uganda to bring the fire up burning because they believe that we are somehow winning the struggle. But good enough, we've worked closely with the American embassy and they've stopped him from coming. So next week he will not be in Uganda to fuel the anti-gay campaign. Thank you so much.